Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. This is Tony Hager, and you're watching Global Wrestling News. Our top story this week, the new professional wrestling league known as Prowl. It's set to make its debut next week at the Freak Show in Las Vegas. Granted, it is a sample, but I can't wait to see what Prowl will roll out in the spring. What are the biggest questions that you have regarding the new pro league? Uh, questions just as uh, how many events will they will be planning on doing. Again, we're going to be seeing more of that this spring. And the biggest thing is, you know, will these wrestlers be getting paid like they did at the Aegon event? Uh, you know, that's what, I, as, as a wrestler, I would be concerned about. But, you know, I, I, that's out of my hands. I know. I don't think it's as huge an issue, perhaps, as you do. But every fighter in MMA fights gets paid differently. And if you're a big star, you're going to make a lot of money if you're just starting out. Gosh, a little bit of money is a whole lot more than they were getting. Yeah, I mean, any kind of money for wrestlers, I think, is a, is a great thing. And there might be some prima donnas out there that think that they should be getting, you know, the big, big, big checks like they did at Aegon. And, you know, I, I don't think that's realistic to happen every time. And, you know, Wayne Boyd and crew, they're, they're doing their best to obviously put money in these wrestlers' pockets. So we'll see what comes of this event. Maybe they can bring in some sponsors to, to get some more money in. Do you think it'll get to that point again? I think so. I mean, we they, if they have the numbers, if they can get in the right arenas, you know, I I think this event and Las Vegas is a good idea, a good start, big lights, you know, that's where uh, all the big events happen. But in wrestling, you know, uh, in Iowa, that was just a huge success. So I'll be kind of curious to see how it goes when it's outside of Iowa. I hope it to, to be as successful as it was at Iowa when you were out on the stage. That was just a, a great event. Well, there's a lot of uh, families, a lot of fans that are going to be in Las Vegas at the Freak Show. Prowl has had several teams in place for a while, including the usual suspects. The Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, the New York Athletic Club, the Sun Kiss Kids Club, the Hawkeye Wrestling Club, and others. What do you say? Let's take a closer look at one of the founding teams. Tony, what can you tell me about the Finger Lakes Wrestling Club? Uh, this is uh, probably a club that a lot of people haven't heard about, like those other ones that we've mentioned, uh, because they don't have as, as high-level senior athletes on it. But, uh, you know, this is just an extension of Cornell University, just a, a club where uh, you know, Kyle Dake trains. I mean, this is uh, where he trains along with some of the, the top-level prep and uh, high school kids, grade schools that are, are, are trying to get to Kyle Dake's level. They're coached by Dave Dean, good friend of yours, Chris Harrington, uh, Clint Wattenberg, Mitch Clark, just to name a few. And Mitch Clark, I know that's one of the names from uh, my history in college wrestling. Yeah, I mean, he's a two-time All-American NCAA champ for Ohio State and author of uh, a book, Scramble Lakes, one of your favorite books, I know. That's a great book, bestseller. You also mentioned Kyle Dake, not an author, but he just announced he's going to move up to 86 kilos to test the competition. Uh, of course, will that carry over to the rio trials i don't know what, what do you think's best for dake what's best for team usa yeah i think he's kind of testing the waters here um we have to first qualify that weight so i think that's a good move by dake and taylor to move up you know i think that could be maybe a big reason for them moving up maybe the coaches at team usa gave them their their input so it will be interesting to see who uh team usa sends the pan am qualifiers in march and uh, Mongolia in April and Turkey in May for the uh, the last chance qualifiers. You know, I don't think those guys are listening to anybody. I think they're doing exactly what's best for them. And perhaps that's what a pro-level athlete needs to do. He has some experience in Greco. I don't think that's the way to go. What are your thoughts on Kyle Dake and Greco? You know, I know Greco, you know, isn't as you know, sexy as maybe freestyle is right now, but he has had success at the Greco level. We saw at the grapple at the garden, you were out there and, you know, we talked about this, that uh, he, you know, he was the first one to get a takedown, but he, you know, ended up losing six to three to a Greco world champ. I mean, that's nothing uh, to shake a stick at. And that, of course, was an awful big stage to perform at Kyle Dake. My hat's off to you for doing so. Another U.S. athlete making a weight change is Titan Mercury's former world champ, Elena Periscova. So we go to the women's side of the ledger. She announced that she'll be moving back down to 63 kilos. The women's program had two world champs and a world bronze medalist in Vegas, but they still need to qualify several weights for Rio. What does the U.S. need to do to be on top of teams like China and Japan at the 2016 Games? You know, at names like Alyssa Lampy. Victoria Anthony, and we still haven't seen, I think, their full potential. Still, you know, trying to figure out their spot in the, the sport. You know, Whitney Condor, uh, I, I think, you know, Elena moving down, she has a really good shot at winning gold, and, and that could be the difference maker from getting bronze to, you know, second or, or first place finish. 
Well, Global Wrestling News continues. That's after the break. Stay tuned. Well, you've waited for it, and it's time to set it over to our friend Hollywood Wayne Boyd for this week's edition of As I See It. Wayne? Hey, thanks, Scott. I hope you're having a great day out there in Iowa. You know, it's another beautiful, sunny, and gorgeous day here in California. It always hurts me to have to tell the rest of the world how beautiful the weather is here. Hey, important thing. Uh, our people in this sport that do so much to cover our sport, Win Magazine, one such person. Uh, they've got a great deal going for clubs in America. If you're interested, contact Win Magazine. Uh, I think you'll find it to be a great opportunity. You get a free subscription for a year. And uh, the articles are fantastic. One such article I read this week was uh, Wayne Bogman's on should Kyle Snyder redshirt. And Wayne Bogman, who's a man of history, Air Force Academy for years, national champion, many world teams, great athlete, uh, endurance guy. He feels like it's a mistake because you miss all that training, all that conditioning, all that regular every week something happen, happening with that college schedule. And there's a lot of truth in that. You know, we have like seven defending NCAA champions across the board going into this year. One of them, only one, Kyle Snyder is taking the red shirt. The big difference is he won the world title. He, he feels like he's got to stay focused on that style. He can get better if he's practicing that style. Conditioning wise, he may not be as ready. Match wise, he may not be as ready. But I, I think it works for him. He can get away with it. I think that's a good move. Um, you know, our sponsors are so important, like this shirt I'm wearing, Nike. You don't have to buy anything, do anything. You just have to do something that enhances your team. If your team needs Nike products, get Nike products. Cliff Keen is another one of our sponsors. So many people in wrestling do so much, and you, the fan base, can get from them in a way that it helps TV. So we need to all work together. I've been preaching that ever since I came on this show. It's the fans, it's the products, it's the sport. We got to do it. Most immediate thing coming up for Titan Mercury and the sport of wrestling is a new pro league called Prowl. That's P-R-O period, Pro, W period, L period, Pro Wrestling League. Wrestling needs that. They have it in other countries. We've got to have it here October 23rd in Las Vegas. We, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, will wrestle Finger Lakes Wrestling Club. The lineup looks good. Uh, Obi Blanc is coming back out of a suspension. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see him wrestle Andrew Hochstrasser. Uh, we got some other great matchups. I've got them written down here. I'm going to take a quick peek. We've got Nate Carr going against Nazar Kolcheski. That should be a great match. Nestor Tefer, we don't know a lot about him, but I think he's a tough guy. He's done some good things, All-American. Wrestling Quentin Godley of Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. Rich Perry had to step out. We've got a hole there right now, but Deron Wynn is ready to take on anybody that steps in, and there will be somebody there. Uh, Enoch Francois, who's had so many great matches with Wynn Mahalik, will face Kale Byers. And last but not least, we'll have Justin Grant of Finger Lakes versus Tyrell Fortune, super heavyweight. Tyrell's just coming off eight days in Iowa where he's been training. He's on his way to Oklahoma. I think we're going to see a different Tyrell Fortune this year. And uh, he's a powerful, explosive guy going to Iran with us at heavyweight, do a good job. Uh, the Iran thing is so tough to get done because of visas, and it just takes months to get it done. We're right in the middle of that. Uh, Jake Varner signed on at 97 kilos. At 86 kilos, we got Chris Perry dropped down to uh, 74 kilos. We got Andrew Howe, and then at 65, the young stud, uh, Aaron Pico is going to be in there fighting for a medal. And at 61 kilos, we've got Daniel Dennis. And of course, our world team member, 
Tony Ramos at 57 kilos. So taking a strong team to Iran, gonna challenge for the World Clubs Cup Championship, and that's gonna, that's a bloodbath. I mean, I went last year, getting there and getting home is, is a lot of work, but the wrestling, fantastic. Maybe the greatest wrestling fans in the world. 65 million people watched the finals last year, and I just recently looked at our movie that will be coming out on to Iran and back, to Iran and back, uh, Braden Barty did a great job there with the help of Lee Schneiderman, and we've got a great film coming out. There's so many super things happening. New season starting, college wrestling. As I said, seven defending champions, six of them are not red shirting. And those guys are gonna be ready for the Olympic final trials. There's some interesting people coming out of there, especially uh, Illinois' Isaiah Martinez. Look for maybe the best season we've seen in a long, long time overall. And with the Olympics right behind it uh, in August, folks, Rio de Janeiro, be there, everybody. I know it's not that easy to go, but it's gonna be one incredible American performance. Going forward to 2020, we will lead the world in wrestling. I'm Wayne Boyd for Takedown TV. Back to you, Scott. I agree with Wayne. I mean, Kyle Snyder redshirting is the best option, hands down. As I mentioned last week, I mean, he's the consensus number one at the weight class, really the only one in college that has a shot at uh, you know, making a world team and ultimately uh, win a gold medal. And he just moved up to number one in the UWW rankings. So. What about Obi Blanc coming back after his suspension? Could he be the first American to defeat Tony Ramos for a spot? I mean, Blanc is a former world team member. He has the credentials that matter. Uh, you know, I, I can't pass the torch to him yet because we haven't seen Blanc come back yet. So we're going to get a good shot at uh, seeing him at the Prow. He's also going to be at uh, the Bill Farrell International. So we'll get a good taste of, uh, you know, if he still has the goods to, to make a world team. Well, he's got the goods. Is it good enough? Wayne brought up Isaiah Martinez, and it got me thinking, why haven't we seen Isaiah on the senior or junior level competition? Should he be making a run at Rio? Um, you know, there's lots of different ways you could look at this, but I think that, uh, you know, he's not ready to challenge for a spot yet just because I haven't seen him wrestle any freestyle. And you know, he has a shot at becoming a, an undefeated four-time national champ. Hasn't happened since Kale Sanderson. So uh, maybe he just doesn't want to take time off from that training because uh, that's, a, that's a feat that will, you know, can go down in history. I don't know, Aaron Pico's name got lost in the shuffle these last few months because he decided to wrestle at the juniors. What do you expect from him at the World Clubs Cup in Iran? Yeah, I think he needs to have a, you know, a real strong finish here. Uh, he really needs to get his confidence back. He's been wrestling a little bit of a, uh, you know, defensive, defensively a little bit. I don't know if it's been since he wrestled at Aegon. If he wins, he's going to have a, you know, a real good shot but by giving his confidence back um, at the next level. I mean, he, he's, he really went down to the junior level to prepare for the senior level. Coaches didn't think he was ready, so a win over there will give him the confidence and his coaches the confidence as well. I think the number of matches he is able to wrestle will only help that young man as he continues to mature and as he continues up the ladder at uh, the senior level. All right, Wayne, thanks so much. Always informative, energetic, and entertaining. Fans, do us a favor, stick around. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Well, this last week, some of the top high school wrestlers in the country announced their future collegiate homes. The Wick Twins from California picked Wisconsin over several other national powers. What kind of immediate impact could they have for Barry Davis and the Badgers, and what other high-level recruits do you expect to see commit in the leading weeks? You know, um, there's that, that's a big get. We talked about last week, the Wick Twins were kind of on that bubble of um, you know being being seen nationally, but you know going to a, Wisconsin Badgers, uh, they're, they're, they had a lot of people that were after them, and I think they got you know a nice little offer to go up to Wisconsin. They changed, you know, they changed the whole aspect of the Wisconsin uh, team there. So, what other top-level recruits will we see commit in the coming weeks? Mark Hall took a visit just to Penn State, and you know that's got to be pretty scary for a lot of the Big Ten coaches out there. You know, Isaiah White. Bo Bresky, Taylor Lamont, and uh, Carter Happel. A lot of these guys are getting real close in my discussion with them. So the next uh, few weeks into November, we're going to see some uh, big names committing. Big names committing, and of course, the collegiate landscape continuing 
to change. All right, quick timeout. Don't touch the dial. We'll be right back. Ohio State will hold their first open practice on Saturday. Tony, what are their chances at winning? They've got Kyle Snyder out of the lineup. They lose Logie Bear to graduation. What are your thoughts? Um, I think there's uh, some better teams out there. You know, I didn't see Ohio State being uh, the national champs last year, so I mean, I could be, I could be, uh, you know, told differently. But until I see what they bring out on the mat, you know, I don't think uh, Ohio State has a shot at dethroning like a Penn State and Iowa. So uh, they, they've got some work to do, and we'll see who fills up those gaps. Well, dethroning is a strong word. I don't know if they're going to dethrone anybody. Remember, they're defending. It's Oklahoma State. They're one of the strong ones. Iowa, I think, has got a tremendous lineup. Don't count out the University of Minnesota and, of course, the changes that have been made at Wisconsin. Will Michigan make a run this year? What are your thoughts? Adam Kuhn in the lineup. There'll be some guys that, you know, make their run at their individual titles at you know, Michigan and these other schools, but, you know, you have to have a full team, and it, we've seen it. It's so hard to put that championship team together. I mean, it's, it's taken Penn State how long to get to that point. Last year, they had some people out of the lineup, so this year they returned those guys, Nico, Rutherford, so I think they are the early favorites. Now the NCAA has recently released a video that was supposed to clarify stalling rules, but it seems to have caused even more confusion. What's the solution to stalling? I mean, uh, Tom Brand just says, just to call stalling. You know, that, that's his famous words, it seems like. And, uh, you know, I, I think the video just really confused a lot more people of, of how it's actually going to be called and I, it's got, I feel for the officials here I mean there's a, a lot of interpretation that could be happening on the edge of the mat with uh, if I'm pushing I'm stalling if I'm pulling I'm stalling so it's going to be very interesting to, to see how they actually call this on the mat. My understanding there were no officials on that committee and that one has me scratching my head what do you say let's take a listen to what I was head man Tom Brands had to say. All right now I'm going to get on the soapbox here and this is my opinion. When you have a rules committee that has no or very little input from officials, right there we've got off on the wrong foot. And, you know, I don't even know if there's an officials uh, voting party in there. I know there's an ad hoc or ad hoc or whatever the word is, member, but I believe they don't vote. And they might vote, but if they do vote, it's one member. It's one, it's one small part of it. And, and so what's happening is, is the people that are actually being paid to enforce these rules have no voice. And so they're being told what to do. And when you're telling somebody what to do, and you're telling professionals that have an opinion and you're not listening to them, that's where you're getting in trouble. You know, I, I agree with them to an extent. we got to call stalling, and we kind of butt heads a lot on the, the push-out rule. So, um, you know, he, he wants what we all want. We want just one more action. But we, we can't have more action if, you know, we're having people go to the edge of the mat and they know that they can't be penalized for it. Well, well they could be if they actually are dinged for stalling. So if they do what they say they're going to do, it'll all work out. Well, Sergeant Justin Lester of the U.S. Army won a silver medal on the final day of the CISM Games. How big a feat is this? You know, he's, he's the only one to medal for Greco and in men's freestyle, you know, over the four-day competition here. You know, it's, uh, it's something that uh, needs to be talked about. It's important, and uh, I'm, good to, I'm glad to see him still competing. Hey, it's tough to win there over 80 nations, over 5,000 athletes from around the world. Last American to win a Greco medal at the Games, Marcel Cooper doing so, picking up a bronze at 69 kilos when? 1999. <laughs> it's been a while, so that <laughs> just shows you how tough it is to do. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, we are out of time. For our executive producer, Andy Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, and Tony Hager, I'm Scott Casper from Studio 3B here in Des Moines, Iowa. We'll see you next week right here on Global Wrestling News. Thanks for watching.